the shocking reason why the U.S. is about to bail out China. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. And why it may seem obvious why the U.S. is running to China's rescue, the real reason may surprise you. Let's pick this story up where we see this headline, the Chinese stocks plummet, but that's not the story. As investors weigh possible, you have tariffs cut on China's goods. And sentiment appeared to have gotten a boost after U.S. President Joe Biden said he was considering cutting U.S. tariffs on Chinese goods at a recent past press conference during his trip to Japan as part of his Asia tour. As consumer prices heated up, the White House has said last month that it was looking how those tariffs had contributed to inflation. Now, I want you to remember that these tariffs on China, these were under former President Trump's administration, and they're still there. When Biden took office, he didn't remove them. They stayed there. But now this is an easy story to sell the American public. Hey, inflation's really high, and you don't like it, so why don't we just pull these tariffs back, and that should ease the inflationary pressure that you're feeling, and then we'll all be better off. And that's the story that everyone's going to buy into, but that's not the real story here. Let's keep going. Because markets seem to take the news as indicative of potential thawing of U.S. China trade tensions, although this isn't the first time tariff reductions have been floated. While a cut to tariffs would help soften U.S. inflation at the margin, reports suggest administration officials are concerned about appearing soft in China ahead of the November congressional elections. But that's not the story either. It's not. Let's keep going because now let's get into what this is potentially all about is foreign businesses falling out of love with China. But even this isn't the whole story. Hang tight because COVID-19 policies and Beijing's increasingly ideological approach to business are making many companies reassess growth plans. Are foreign companies giving up on China? Well, they're certainly sounding a grumpy note as an April survey by the European Union Chamber of Commerce in China found that 23% of respondents were considering shifting current or planned investments in China to other markets, the highest toll in the past decade. Now, you might say, well, that's great news. Let's get some of these businesses, maybe these manufacturing hubs out of China, bringing even some of them back to the U.S. would be good news. But the U.S. doesn't actually want that. And let's keep going because I want you to understand the whole political ramification behind this. And that just might shock you. Apple, whose suppliers in China constitute the country's largest source of private sector employment, is pushing its contractors to do more manufacturing elsewhere. Even before the latest Omicron wave hit Shanghai, over a third of American companies told the American Chamber of Commerce this spring that they would reduce investments in the country due to the policy environment there. And foreign heavyweights such as Apple have invested so much in China and are still making enough money there that there's little prospect of a mass exodus, at least for now. But the stars are lining for much more concerted effort, long predicted, but slow in arriving by large manufacturers to diverse away, diversify away from the country. Besides slower growth in China itself, the consequences could include further yuan weakness and higher profile for more growth-oriented Chinese leaders, such as Premier Li, who have recently enjoyed something of resurgence in mentions by Chinese official media after a long period of wilderness. And the country's strict anti-COVID policies, which left most of Shanghai in lockdowns for much of the past two months, is the main reason. And now we're starting to understand, at least from the corporate side, why this is happening. is because supply chains are slowing down. They can't get products to the U.S. And, and really bringing the tariffs down isn't going to change much about the problems going on in China in terms of their COVID zero policy. But that isn't even why the U.S. government wants to keep businesses there. Let's get a little bit deeper in this, and then I'll share with you what's going on. Now, China's export growth has taken a steep dive thanks to a combination of COVID-19 lockdowns, weakening overseas demand, and more likely tougher competition from other low-cost manufacturers that were closed last year. As exports may rebound temporarily should Shanghai get fully back on its feet, but most of these factors are likely to persist for a while. And there will be inevitably more disruptive lockdowns in China, given the very low probability of a significant move away from their zero COVID policy until early 2023. And while alternative production locations such as Southeast Asia and India all present their own difficulties, 
They also have some distinct advantages, including growing youthful labor forces and governments that aren't positioning themselves as ideological and potentially military opponents of developing democracies. And now we finally get to the heart of what's going on here, and it's political, because the U.S. needs China just as much as China needs the U.S. But if you wondered why the sanctions against Russia didn't really work, well, they're not a big trading partner. In fact, they're a pretty minuscule trading partner with the U.S., so we can't do much to them. But China, on the other hand, is a massive trading partner, our biggest. They're the biggest exporter. We're the biggest importer. Now, if U.S. companies pull out of China, well, what does that mean? Well, it means that our influence over them also drops. But if companies from the U.S. continue to produce in China, and China likes the money that flows in terms of dollars into the country, the jobs that are created, and all the economic benefits are participating in a dollar-centric world, well, they're likely to participate. And we talked about this in other shows that we focused on China here, is when they looked at methods and ways to get away from the U.S. dollar, what did they find out? They couldn't do it. There was no reasonable way. So as long as the U.S. keeps companies in China, well, we can keep them at bay from perhaps their military operations. So now you see that this is all political because we can use our power of the dollar and our manufacturing base in their home country to actually keep them in line with what we really want. And that is the real story is why China will likely recover more slowly from the latest COVID shock, but certainly a reduction in tariffs would help. For China, the main story is here, have we seen the light at the end of the tunnel? The worst of supply chains dislocations in China from COVID lockdown looks to be other over, but we also think the road recovery will likely be slow and bumpy. Case in point, German auto manufacturer Volkswagen, which has factories in two of this year's hardest hit regions, said on Wednesday, China production sites were up and running, but COVID controls were disrupting supply chains. And about 80% of manufacturing in southern China is back to normal, though the region's big city of Shenzhen shut nearly all business for about a week in March, moving products via truck with the provinces okay due to very low numbers of COVID cases in the region. Members of the sun, southern Guangdong province and manufacturing hub are all busy. They all have work to do. And he noted that businesses were keeping their warehouses fuller than before to prevent prolonged shortage issue. But unpredictability is there. You don't know what will happen. And that's right. We don't know. But now we start to understand. And there's something else that is unpredictable right now. And that is the markets with most of them headed in bear mode, looking to potentially even go down further. But one thing that shouldn't be dropping with them as much is your portfolio. Be sure to check out Portfolio Shield. I'll put a link up here in the corner and in the description below. Let's continue on because the story in China looks like it's going to get even worse, and that's not good for the U.S. because what does that put the Fed in a position to do if our biggest exporting partner can't bring enough goods over to soften inflation? Well, it means the Fed's in play for even longer. As China's premier offers bleak outlook as GDP target hopes fade. Li held an emergency meeting on Wednesday with thousands of representatives from local governments, state-owned companies, and financial firms, calling on them to do more to stabilize growth. He said the economy is in some respects faring worse than in 2020 when the pandemic first emerged and urged more efforts to reduce a soaring unemployment rate. Li's warning to add to expectations that Beijing may admit to missing its growth domestic product target by a large margin this year as it keeps focusing on controlling COVID-19 infections through stringent controls. Economists surveyed by Bloomberg forecast economy will grow at a mere four and a half percent this year, below target of five and a half. As the premier highlighted the economy's weak performance, saying economic indicators in China have fallen significantly and difficulties in some aspects and to a certain extent are greater than when the epidemic hit us severely in 2020. He called on officials to ensure unemployment falls and the economy operates in a reasonable range in the second quarter this year. And now, how about a little bit of good news about the U.S. economy as we wrap up today's show? The unemployment rate, actually the initial claims for unemployment, not the rate, the initial claims fell 8,000 to 210,000, which is still historically low. Even better is showing signs that the labor market is strong. 54,000 people fell off total claims, bringing that down to 1.317 million. But that, will that party come to an end pretty soon? Well, it will. When we look at the four-week moving average of initial claims, which is just to smooth out the data against the Wilshire 5000 price index on a year-over-year -year rate 
ready to change. What we see is in red as the stock market goes down on a year over year rate of change. And notably, I'm not, I had to cut off the COVID part just so we could see this, how this affects in the past is as the market comes down, well, unemployment starts to rise, oftentimes with a lag. So what we can kind of gather here, we're kind of at the end where we might be seeing the last of the best of these unemployment numbers, unless the market comes surging back, look for unemployment rate to rise at a time the Fed is going to continue to tighten. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.